Okay, and so with that um, that challenge, that wero, um, we are now going to enter into our last section before Paramanoa Samkai is going to be shared to um, have a little bit of a break and nourish our bodies. Um, it is probably the two best people to be able to um, follow on from Helen's challenge. Um, I'm sure that neither of them need an introduction. They are our um, leaders of our partnership entities of the health system, um, Te Whatu Ora and Te Aka Whai Ora. And I believe they are both online. One is online. Te Nā Koe. Um, I'm not sure what you can see from your end, um, but we have um, a large group of people in the room here in Te Whanganui Atara, plus we have a large group of people joining us virtually from around the country. Um, and so it is my pleasure to give you the floor to um, open our space with a little bit of introduction and we will have some time for question and answer um, to get our conversation going to help pave the way for our future. Kia ora. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa. Can you just give me a thumbs up if the sound is okay? Awesome. Um, so tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, no hamoa o kutipuna uh, i fano mai o i uh, tamaki makoro uh, ko manuko te awa i fangai hai fangai hia uh, ko uh, te pulia i magi apa toku ingoa uh, ko au te tai te tumu fakaro uh, te fatu ora no te tena koto tena koto tena tato katoa. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Now, I've um, I've had coffee with my partner this morning and I've lost her. So I hope that um, I'm sure Diana will join us because uh, we were both really looking forward to this uh, opportunity to, um, to talk. Um, I won't take too much time because I do really value questions and answers um, more than, um, you know, death by slides or speeches. I do just want to acknowledge the previous speaker. I did catch... Um, the end of her um, your presentation, and I want to just draw um, your attention to um, really addressing those in historical inequities of access to health for Māori. And as we have seen over our health system, Pasifika, uh, Tangata Faikaha, um, there are many communities rural who have not seen the benefits of our health system over many years, and that is really at the heart of the legislation that establishes us, uh, uh, the pai order legislation, if you're, you're into reading uh, law, um, I would encourage you to have a look at it because there are some really important principles that actually reinforces the need for us to look at equity as part of our DNA, and in particular the decision-making principles that we are currently working on how we design our organisation to make sure that it's represented at all levels of, of decision-making, um, but also uh, te pai order does put at the heart of it uh, equity. It also broadens our view as a health system think be, to think beyond the individual, but also to think about Fano and communities as part of the way that we deliver healthcare. So I'll just um, give a few short um, updates on where we are at as an organization. Um, and I want to just emphasize that I'd call it transition 2.0. Um, we really just merged 29 entities. It beggars belief um, how we had so many entities with their own boards, um, with large degrees of um, self-autonomy making decisions for um, the health of our, our communities and our whanau. And so the, the, what we've achieved so far is really just merging those entities, uh, removing boards, and simplifying the leadership structure. So we are all have all the districts reporting through interim regional directors. And I do want to emphasize that we are in the very early stages of building our leadership teams at a national, regional, and then we'll look at local leadership next year. Um, and, and so the, the opportunities to build the diversity of our leadership are not lost or gone. We are in an interim phase and in recruiting at the moment, I did make an announcement earlier this week, um, which will be a role that will be a key for you all. Uh, Dr. A Abby Anderson is joining us um, in, on the 12th of September as the National Commissioner. 
And that role is really important because in that role, uh, that is an important, uh, we've, and we've set, designed that role to sit apart from hospital and specialist services, but needing to work very closely. If you recall in district health boards, we had DHBs that were responsible for not just ho uh, hospital specialists, but also community and, and often because of the way the incentives were set up for DHBs to uh, manage their finances and break even, often we would find that the cost growth of hospitals did tend to take the priority over um, investing in primary community because every entity had to deliver a, a balanced um, budget and balanced books. Um, in our new arrangement, the government has set us up with arrangements so that we can actually separate out the investment in primary community. Um, we can also have the flexibility to move funding around so that we are able to make sure we're shifting resources to meet those priorities. Um, the government's also set up with a two-year funding pathway. So for the next two years, uh, we have an opportunity to uh, transition ourselves. So by merging all those entities, we will be moving to um, internally to reorganize ourselves so that we nationalize um, key functions that will help us actually run the system more efficiently. So nationalize finance, um, look at ways of uh, getting the best use of our people and culture talent. And importantly, from a commissioning perspective, reset the way that we plan and fund so that we do get uh, national consistency, but also enable and support more regional decision-making. And as we establish localities, and again, the, the legislation requires that we cover the country with localities by 2024. Um, so many of you will know that we have nine announced. We may have another three um, in the next few, but we are gonna have to work through a process of covering the country more quickly um, if we're going to really support some of the the benefits of helping provider networks engage with an Iwi Māori partnership boards, um, rebuild community networks to have a voice in how local services are determined and delivered and, and support that happening um, at a much quicker pace than what it's taken us to set up uh, nine prototypes. So that's quite an important piece of work for us and, and we are engaging with um, those communities and we, the board and ministers will um, be getting some advice on how we can do that in a way that um, allows time for communities to build their own relationships but also doesn't um, and, and just because it might take some communities or localities a little bit longer we can still ensure that we can get some resourcing and support into the, those, those local areas to and support communities coming together. I do just want to acknowledge um, all the colleagues in the room who have been um, part of um, supporting our workforces and communities through COVID, um, we have started to see in the last week, now hospitals are still full, uh, but the viral COVID contribution to those admissions is tapering off and other things, of course, are coming to the fore. Uh, we're still seeing from the national uh, data that we put together, um, that primary community-based uh, services, you're still seeing quite a bit of that pressure and it often does take a, a bit longer for you to see any of that we taper off and so really just acknowledging that you are all uh, supporting communities and patients at a, a much uh, busier time while we're seeing other parts of the system um, start to see the early effects of warmer weather and spring. Um, I just want to end by saying that uh, we do see lots of opportunities in our commissioning work to, um, and this is certainly one of the objectives of the reforms, um, not just to build uh, Māori decision-making and Māori input at all levels of the organisation. Uh, Diana, who I, hope, who I hope will join us soon, um, she and I, um, our boards are very closely um, aligned. We um, work together. We um, have a, a relationship which is a co-commissioning one. Um, and that means that we will work together on both the priorities for where we want to see investment but also how we go about uh, commissioning it. Uh, we both have a commitment to build up our primary community in the NGO sector. That has been the sector that has really supported our community's access through COVID. And we want to strengthen and support the capacity that we've already built, because that will help us shift um, a lot of work out into our communities um, where we are likely to see better access for communities that might not normally come into a clinic or a, an urban setting um, as, as readily as other populations. 
Uh, we are working through spreading that right down through our organisation. Um, our regional management teams will have Atiaka Faiwara Regional Director on board, and at a local level through INPBs and uh, local Māori health leaders uh, working with our district or locality uh, managers. So we're bedding in um, and designing into the way that we work um, Māori input at decision making at all levels. Um, from a, 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 another perspective, uh, that we do have lots of opportunities to simplify nationally how we contract, how we plan and fund. And one of the simplest things I've been told by you and some of your colleagues um, that we could do as a system is actually simplify the way that we, we contract and plan and fund and make that process much more agile. And certainly in the new environment, we are going to need to put money into our communities much more quickly than what we have been to date. And that is a, a learning that we are taking from other industries and how we, how we review the way our national sector operations work and simplifying that environment. And we can do that now because we are one organization rather than having 18 different district health boards try to work it out um, themselves. So those are the, the sort of opportunities where we want to make it easier for you uh, to do business with us as a, a national organization. Um, so finally, I do just want to end and very happy to take questions and comments with um, that we are um, setting ourselves up, designing ourselves, and we'll certainly be recruiting for leadership uh, that will help us uh, set up a more agile approach to commissioning. Uh, we inherit um, some funding challenges from the previous environment that will take a bit of time to work through, particularly where government has to make some decisions about issues like uh, pay parity or pay relativity. Um, that's one issue that we were not funded or set up or to, to address, but we are providing as much information as quickly as we can to help government inform their own decision-making. Uh, but certainly from um, the, this point going into the future, I would uh, posit that one of the reasons we have that inequity or relativity is that we have not taken, uh, here comes Liana, uh, we, have, we have not taken the, um, an equitable approach to how we price and cost and set up arrangements. And so over time, um, those inequities have grown to a point where it is unsustainable. And so we do have the, uh, the opportunity as Te Whatu Order in setting up um, commissioning, uh, the commissioning teams that we go forward with a, a more equitable approach to how we resource and shift resource, um, particularly where care is moving into primary community settings. Uh, it will take some time and we just um, ask for a bit of um, um, uh, patience and engagement. Um, as Abby gets on board, she is determined to get around the country. She comes from a primary care uh, funder background and one of the reasons I um, recruited her is she's also been involved in some very creative ways of actually getting resource into uh, local communities and primary care um, who uh, work with indigenous communities and building up services is something that's been really core to her heart and her work. So I look forward to introducing her to you when she starts. I'll stop there and I see Liana is on board now. Um, Liana, I've just made a few opening uh, remarks and, um, and then we can open for questions and answers. Oh, tēnā koutou katoa, aroha mai Ngāti Tūrei Te Ahau. Um, I'm very, very sorry. I forgot my swipey cards and got locked downstairs. <laughs> so I had a great a great deal of... This is what happens when you're not used to having environments where everything is governed by a little swipey card. Um, but anyway, sorry, apologies for that. Um, I'm safely within the building now here at Te Manuka Nuka Okotūroi. Ngāri nei ngā mihi kia koutou. Koriana manual tōku ingoa no pare hauraki a hau. Uh, I tipu ake au i rotu i taku awawa manaia. Uh, ingari hari koa nga hau ki te haramai uh, ki te kautopo tēnei kaupapa. Uh, my name is Riana. I hail from a little place called Manaia on the Coromandel Peninsula. And it's, um, yeah, it's a real privilege to be here today and my apologies for lateness. So over to you, uh, back over to you Maji. Oh, well, um, tēnā, tēnā kōrua e ngā, e ngā rangatira. Um, now we're going to open the space for any um, pātai questions. We've got a microphone at the front, but then we've also got the lovely Henry who will um, bring a microphone to you. Yep. 
Kia ora kōrua, ko um, Ian Toka Ingoa. Um, I'm a GM Operations at Primary Care in Taitokoro. Um, I work for Mahitahi Haora. Um, I was really inspired by the kōrero and whakaro that we heard from Helen. And to me, the biggest wero that we face is the challenge of funding and trust in primary care. And traditionally, um, and I, I've been planning and funding in primary care um, in Taitokoro, and I know how difficult it is to shift resources to the front lines, to community and to primary care. Um, my question is, how will you use commissioning to value trust, to value relationships? So often being on the other side, I now see mahi and the value and the judgment on whether something is valuable or successful based on widgets or inputs and not on the efforts that are needed to achieve equity for communities so that's my wero to you how will you use commissioning to truly meet that uh, a kia ora, ian for the the question and a really good one and i think that is the um absolute challenge in how we redesign and reset the way that we um, commission. And if we just break down commissioning, it's basically about understanding population health needs, um, working out um, where the priorities need to sit for how we respond as a healthcare system, then setting up um, the, what are the kinds of interventions that we need that will make a difference, and then supporting the delivery base, whether it's providers or communities, how we then reach those interventions in to help um, our patients and communities. And at every step of the way, um, I think that we should be, um, and this is the whole, um, I, I think a really great strategy around localities, is that we're creating um, a process that actually has more community input and primary um, delivery input at each of those steps, rather than um, and I'm not over, um, I'm over dramatizing probably, but you know, we're designing somewhere in the center of our population health priority. Um, we work out ourselves what the intervention and how we deliver it. And then we, we drop funding into the system. And often we're not, um, just to come back to my earlier point about um, pay relati relativity and pay parity, then we drop and what we, what we end up is with a, a funding allocative model where we're saying, actually, we know it might cost X, but actually we've only got Y available. And then we, we try to um, make it fish knowing that it's gonna be a challenge for the delivery um, part of our system to meet that. So we need to break open that process and um, through a region and then at a locality level, um, being much more upfront and open about how much resource we've got um, how we co-design um, the way that we might get interventions in and also recognize that we've got providers and communities who've been delivering for communities for a long time and that we take a relational approach to how we then um, set up agreements between us to deliver that care. Whereas a lot of the processes we've run in the past have often been REFIs or EOIs or, and I think that we can actually strike a balance between um, giving government assurance that we've been, as a, as a publicly funded entity, that we are being um, absolutely fair and appropriate in how we uh, make available resources, but also build on the capacity and the capability that we have already. Um, so it will take some time, Ian, and it will be a culture shift for, for us as a, a Crown-owned entity. Um, and our challenge in, in meeting your riddle is that we don't revert back to some of the historical practices because they're um, easy or we overreach when we get challenged by some public question or a media question that we are holding true to building um, those relationships. Diana, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I was just going to say, and, and factoring into the commissioning back into our communities as well, is about having different kinds of uh, relationships. And so as a person who's come from the community and being you know, long funded uh, by the, the traditional systems, one of the things I look forward to is having high trust conversations with our providers, uh, making sure that we have contracts that are, are outcome based, um, that we can, you know, that are much easier, that have less reporting lines, that make the whole system move and, and um, move and groove much more swiftly so that we get the kind of right outcome we want over time and who knows where that will lead to um, and that's what kind of excites me in this space. But 
hear the point around, um, you know, we've got a lot of work to do in the commissioning um, places, but that's that's the excitement of a reform, is that this is the opportunity we have now in front of us, and we've got to do as much as we can uh, to make it, you know, to hear the voices from all parts of our community and make sure that we include them on this journey. Oh, tēnā te mihi ki a kōrua. Um, ko Dougal Thorburn tōkawingua. Um, I'm a public health doctor and a general practitioner. I work alongside um, Ngāti Tōa Rangatira as well as um, at the National Screening Unit um, at Manatū, or oh, Te Whatu Ora. <laughs> um, I, yes, you noted. Look, um, really positive um, to hear your thoughts um, and your, your, your strength and your genuineness with respect to uh, doing things differently. It's really encouraging. Um, one of the things I noted, uh, two things I noted, uh, Margie, that you, you said, one, one was the, uh, the concept of possibilities of redistributing money um, from, uh, well, around, including the primary and community care. Um, I, I want to acknowledge that we have about 6% of our health budget, Vote Health, goes into primary community care, yet as we know that if we invest in primary community care, it will um, uh, have a higher association and probability of achieving pay order, as well as reducing inequities. So um, I, I'm, I'm encouraged to, to hear that. Uh, probably the question that I've got really is, um, many of us are asking, um, particularly within Māori providers um, and those community and those providers that serve hive needs practices, like we heard from Helen, is, is the consideration of um, the funding for primary care, specifically in light of the Y2575 recommendations around redressing uh, the underfunding of Māori providers, um, as which include um, the and and also um, re addressing the underfunding that um, that is uh, related to uh, those practices serving very high needs communities. Um, without that, uh, without that addressed, um, we will very uh, we will struggle as a nation to achieve our vision of play order. Uh, just like to hear your response. Um, thank, thank you, Dougal. I'll, I'll kick off the other can add. So I, I think, um, so we've done the work and the, which confirms what you're saying, particularly um, the, the acknowledging that the capitation formula doesn't acknowledge the additional cost um, or resource required to reach um, hard to reach uh, communities. And so we do have some work um, looking at how we address that um, within the funding that we've got um, from um, from the budget. Um, I'd also suggest, however, that there are a number of other things that we need to do in primary care that will increase access. Um, there are a number of um, platforms, I suppose, that um, we, we have been, which can support access, but it hasn't been easy to support the shifting of care. So I, I'll just throw out there um, two, two particular programs I'm interested in working on how we nationalize our fund our programs like POAC for example, or primary options for acute care. Some regions have, we, we kind of have coverage around the country, but they're the sorts of, um, how do we make it easier for those sorts of um, additional um, services that might not just stop someone from getting into a hospital, but also provide some additional sports at primary care, whether it's a GP practice or a provider can resource to um, support that. And that is a way of potentially um, funding more plan care, because we know that um, you know, our, our primary care could do more um, in helping us with, um, you know, planned care, um, whether it's diagnostics or interventions across the country, but we have a very uneven spread of the way that that program works. Um, and then how we use pathways as a way to really build into and put at the fingertips of um, anyone in a, a clinical um, setting, um, supports advice on, um, which includes enabling equity. So how um, Māori or Pacific or uh, a person with disabilities, extra considerations that should be part of that um, clinical decision making. And again, we have pathways in most parts of the country, but it's very uneven and lumpy on how we, uh, what, what pathways are accessible to everybody, but also um, very inconsistent in how much equity um, consideration is built into those pathways to give people more tools. So, so I'm not, um, Dougal, we do need to address um, the funding and we've got advice that um, tells us a, a, a bit about what um, the size of that is. Uh, but I'd suggest that we have a, a number of other things we need to do across the primary care sector that will help us shift care 
um, to any practice that has a, a Māori or a Pacific person turn up, but also um, an easy way to make to put funding into primary care's hands if you want to be able to do some things that will, will give somebody access to care earlier rather than sending them off to a hospital or having them wait um, on a planned care list. Yeah, kia ora, Dougal, um, and I totally support everything, so I won't repeat anything that Margie um, has said because they, you know, all roads lead to uh, us wanting to make sure that we put more investment in at that front, at the primary care end. And I think that I just wanted to note that we've had some great examples during COVID um, whereby our services became more mobile than they've ever been as well. So looking to how we support uh, our communities, particularly rural communities that have better access to some things and how we can move resources. So sometimes it's about increasing the overall um, putia or money that we put into a specific area and noting for equity, as Margie said, but sometimes it's about understanding too that if we move a resource from the centre back out, like, and I'll use the example of say a mammography, um, a mammography suite being moved back out into a partnered kaima, a partnered Māori provider uh, that then can increase the number of people in that rural community to have better access, then we know that primary care starts to look very, very different. Um, and again, uh, getting more of those screening kind of opportunities out closer to home, so better, closer, sooner, uh, to drive some different behaviours and some changes in those spaces, because what we can all probably acknowledge, particularly for Māori, um, and I don't think it'll be that different for our Pacific Island whānau as well, is that we don't have enough opportunity to actually increase the health literacy of our own people. So knowing more and understanding more, and again, we saw this as a little bit of an example with rat testing, the pulse oximetry testing. If we give people the education, the opportunity and the resources in their own homes, it can change the way that they utilize our primary care services as well. And how do we recognize those kind of opportunities? Kia ora koutou, ko Jeff Lowe, talking well. Hey, nice to see you both. Um, no surprises and nice segue into, um, into planned care. Now, I, I know that the um, paper from the task force has been with both of you and is now with your board, so I understand, with about 70 recommendations. We have a room full of people who have been working at the front line through COVID and have demonstrated the capability and capacity that exists within primary care. We now have a opportunity with planned care. We have one system, one workforce, one set of services being delivered across two different locations, that in the hospital and that in the community. How can we at this point now take that opportunity and start the mahi that needs to be done? And some initial thoughts on around those 70 recommendations that have been put forward by the task force. Kia ora. Thank you, Jeff. And I do want to express my thanks to the, the task force if there are other members, and particularly yourself, Jeff, um, providing the, um, a primary care uh, perspective. And um, you know, we're, we're really just working through the recommendations on how we action them at the moment and setting up some um, processes. The board will get a more detailed plan, but certainly we, we think we, we aim to release that um, and make it available um, as uh, over the next week or so. Uh, but look, and, and just the scope of the, the task force recommendations, which are really um, impressive, is challenging the whole system, not just hospitals, but also diagnostics, primary care, and I think there are some also really um, interesting questions where uh, clinical decision making um, and the variation across clinical decision making needs to, you know, building some consen some consensus points around how we're um, using BMI, for example, as part of assessing people for specialist care. So thank you to, to those of you who are involved. Um, look, Jeff, I, I, I think that we are poised um, for um, implementation and rapid um, sharing of some of that work and, and you will be aware that some of the recommendations that you've posed, uh, the task force has proposed as early um, wins to move um, some of that work into primary care. Um, I do think we need to stand up very quickly um, some basic platforms to help us do that because at the moment we don't have an easy way um, to deal with, um, with how we fund or how we transact that work and without setting up complicated contracts. Um, and I do think that's the way that we run things like POAC, for example, 
and pathways, which offers us both um, sets out clear expectations of how um, a pathway needs to be implemented and, and provides clinical guidance to decision making, but also that we can rapidly pay for that work if it gets done um, in a really simple, easy way. Um, is really the work we need to do to set up the platform so that, um, and, and look, I'm, um, I haven't consulted my team at all, but I do imagine a world where, and again, it, it also helps us address the issue of variation. Um, some GPs will want to do some bits of work and others won't. And so, but we, we need to be able to assure our community that um, they have options, even if it's not with their own GP, to go and get a papel or um, a, a get a, a diagnostic or an investigation. So um, how we set up a platform that makes it easy for both our consumers, but also yourselves to be able to um, send a patient, whoever's delivering that care, will get funded for it in an easy way. Um, and that we do it at a very low transaction cost for everybody is, is the very rapid work we need to do. And, and like I said, We've got platforms in place that we just are very lumpy across the country that we can build on POAC pathways. And, and certainly um, from a hospital perspective, uh, you know, we, we have, uh, there are, and there's gonna be diversity of arrangements across the country where uh, we you know we can't leave communities or populations not being able to access the care because we don't have enough provision in primary community settings. So really positioning the specialist, publicly funded specialist, as the default provider rather than the um, the, the only place where you can get it, I think is, is, is where we certainly want to get to um, from that perspective. So um, look, we're well poised and we will be needing um, to work with closely with the primary care sector to make sure that we set these systems up or expand them um, in a way that meets all of our needs. Yeah, and I, and I think um, Margie has outlined all of that very, very well. And obviously we're working in partnership around this, around these opportunities, but um, I, I'm excited by the opportunity through this through this uh, planned care report to or the recommendations to look at what else could we do back out in our communities. And I think that's kind of, you know, like all the recommendations uh, are going to point us in the right direction uh, in terms of what we need to do around this particular piece of work. But I look forward to what are the opportunities to change. And again, I think I've mentioned just before, moving resources into different spaces and places um, to improve overall access for people. Kia ora koro, Amajit Maxwell Aho. Is that working? Um, one final question. Um, my role is to move Fakare Collaborative Aotearoa. Um, I'm hugely optimistic about localities and like many others see it as the cornerstone of the health reforms. But I do get that this is a huge challenge and in terms of the 2024 deadline, um, there is a lot to do. And as you talked about that engagement, that authentic engagement at our community level. Um, I come from a local government background, a health background, and also an NGO background. So I do, as I say, get the challenge that is ahead. Um, I suppose from, a, from an organization that supports this network and like other organizations like us um, that support the collaboration, my question is what advice would you give us, Collaborative Aotearoa, um, in terms of how we can more effectively support um, the central government in terms of the agenda going forward, but also our network, because we're always looking to move ahead and stay on point. Um, so yeah, just that open question. Well, thank you uh, for, for that. It's a really good question. And I, um, again, when, when Abby gets on board, um, you know, we will take the opportunity to, to check that, particularly as we are planning for scale of localities, and uh, we, we will need to um, do this in partnership with um, organizations like yourselves. And, and also to make sure that, um, you know, we, we don't want you to lose the momentum on healthcare homes. Um, that has been an important part of, um, you know, from what we're, I've seen um, from my, my um, kind of looking at things nationally, um, healthcare home practices and continuing to build the range of su supports around them is, is still really key. So keep going would be uh, one message on, on that part. Um, but also we, uh, you know, we will need to, um, you know, as we get to regional and local and build the, the leadership teams there, um, we'll need to collaborate very closely with those 
um, networks, PHOs who are already working and providing in practice in uh, regions and locality areas. But importantly, um, those local, um, you know, what we've learned from the localities to date is that while there's really good energy between community and practices and providers and iwi or Māori, it does take, um, as you well know, because you, you're a collaborative network yourselves, it does take um, bringing, holding those relationships together, um, you know, it does take time. And um, depending on how locality geographic boundaries lie, we're, we're likely to offer a default approach. And then it's so that, and that's just so that we don't have communities um, missing out, but certainly they can be shaped by providers and communities and iwi Māori partnership boards as we go. So when we um, come out to really think about and talk to people about scale and coverage, uh, we would certainly be looking to you to either offer up some representatives um, and at a national, regional and local level to work with us to, to do that so that we are building on the strength and capacity that already exists in those communities. The only thing I would add to that corridor um, and, and completely support, you know, um, working collaboratively in the space uh, with you all and noting that Iwi Māori partnership boards, of course, will be um, pivotal in the process and the uh, locality plans that go forward. Um, and it's around, you know, acknowledging how we form up those tetiriti partnerships and focus on equity as we move these new systems out. Uh, all these and create these new networks. I think for a long time, uh, we've all aspired to work in, in these kind of locality networks. And sometimes it's been easy and sometimes it hasn't been as easy. And, and I say that as a person who worked out in a community in a locality kind of full way in a very rural community. But um, one of the things I'd like to think about, I'd like us to think about how we can do that is to, uh, you know, is to really feed into and keep feeding into what do they look like? How do we need to move and shape them? Because I think the, the thing we often do wrong is that we just imagine one way of doing, pulling it off, we stay there um, and we don't allow ourselves to pivot when it's not going in quite the direction we want to. So feedback is um, essential, having good feedback, good interaction, good collaboration uh, and great partnerships throughout the process, I think will make it really successful. And of course, we all want success because ultimately what we're trying to strive for is better access for the people in our communities, particularly those who don't currently have it. Held up. Oh, well, tēnā um, hoki kōrua. Um, thank you so much for taking some time out of your really busy schedules to come and open the space of Wānanga and Kōrero um, this morning. Um, we are heading into morning tea and we're a little bit late. And so um, I'm going to thank you and um, head off into the rest of your, your day.